Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan. This is my wife Stephanie. Hello. Thanks for joining me. Yep. Sometimes it's fun to be able to bounce stuff off of her and uh, not just have to sit up here and talk myself in circles all the time. But episode two mm -hmm. of Beat My Bourbon. So last time it was, you know, can you guys beat my rye? We had a great time with that. And I uh, really appreciate all the support on that series that we did. This time around we got more submissions. So you guys must have enjoyed it because we got 10 people that submitted, well, 10 bourbons that were submitted. And the category this time is what? Finished bourbon. That's right. Finished right. bourbon. Yes. You nailed it. <laughs> Put me on the spot there. I did. So she's been keeping track of everything in a spreadsheet. And there's like two layers of anonymity here. I'd mm -hmm. have to, I, I don't know what's been submitted or by whom uh, on the table today. So she has poured the next five. We started out with the first five uh, in yesterday's video and I eliminated three. I, I selected, well, more accurately, I selected my two favorites. Right. That would move on to the final round. To compete against yours in the final round. To compete against mine in the final round. Let me grab the bottle. So I threw down the gauntlet and I said, I don't think there's a finished bourbon on your shelf that can beat mine in a blind. And the one that I selected was Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend uh, Batch 205. And so this is Joseph A. Magnus. Do you remember where I told you they're headquartered now? Is it Michigan? Holland. Yes. Yeah. Great job. I do listen sometimes. So uh, Nancy Fraley, the uh, master blender there, they recently moved their operation up here to Michigan. It's really close to us. It's like 30 minutes yeah. away. They do all their blending there. Anyways, Nancy Fraley actually on our uh, review of this bottle on our channel, we were one of the first people to get a review of this batch out. So she came in and she left a, a just a wonderful comment on our channel, just uh, detailing everything that went into the blend because that information wasn't even on their website yet. <laughs> And so that was a really cool interaction. So we appreciate her and her work. But anyways, this is delicious. And I said, y'all don't have one that can beat it. Before you go, can I ask what makes something a cigar blend? Is it a smoky taste or so? are you supposed to drink it with cigars? They, yeah, I the really idea know. is that you're making a blend of a bourbon that would uh, really complement a cigar well. So you want rich and sweet okay. to offset the uh, okay. you know, tobacco-y notes. Gotcha. And, and oftentimes you do get sort of a tobacco and leather vibe sure. in here that kind of complements that, but then also brings the fruitiness out. Interesting. So okay. this one uh, was finished in Armagnac, Sherry, and Cognac casks. So wines and fortified wines. Okay, sure. So anyways, in the last video, we took the first five samples. She poured them at random. I selected my two favorites to move on. And today we're going to do the next five. And again, I'll select my two favorites today. They'll move on. And in the next video, it will be uh, the, the finale, the wrap up. So the four that I selected will go head to head against my bottle, the Joseph Magnus, in a blind. And we'll see if somebody's able to take my bottle down. Last time, they didn't. And this time, I'm really hopeful that we beat him. We got to beat him. Yeah. So I figured we'd do some sort of a reward for if somebody takes me mm -hmm. down, have some, maybe even if it's just a sticker or a badge or something that just says like, I beat, I beat Dramguard's bottle. Yeah. You know what I mean? So let him have a little bit of a moniker to sort of flex I love that. It. Yeah. Well, let's get started. Starting here with glass one. I think in the last video, I did, we did A through E. Yeah. I labeled him a little different so I could remember what's what. So. Ooh. A lot of uh, like well-seasoned oak and raisins on this. I love that raisin. I get that raisin note on a lot of wine cask finished products. Hmm. I can see what you're saying, yeah. I don't, know. I don't I, like raisins, though, so. Well, did you ever, like, as a kid, have, you know, those little boxes of raisins? Yeah. And you open the box The sun-made, I think yeah, is yeah. what they're called. Yeah. When there's sort of this great, I don't know, I want to see, like, it's kind of creamy and burnt sugary. It makes me think of creme brulee mm -hmm. as well, which I love. Okay. I love that note yeah. on a nose. Color-wise... It's got a nice darkness to it. It's it's not like golden. It's more what would you call it? More bronze or copper? Amber maybe. Amberish. It's got sort of a red tinge to it. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. Cheers. In the last video, I even told you afterwards. I was like, I think a lot of these were wine cask finishes. Yeah. They had a lot of fruity notes to them. Mm -hmm. This one to me is really quintessential bourbon because I get a lot of the vanilla and the caramel. I'm also getting this like bright cherry alongside mm. like baking spices like your cinnamons and cloves. And I really like that. They're very playful with each other and they, it works quite well. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I love a good cherry note on a bourbon. Mm. And some. You like cherries though. Yeah, I like yeah, cherries, a nice. flavor and, and things. So I like that. I get down with that. I think we're starting off strong here. I'm getting a lot of oak on it too, mm. which makes sense that these are finished. They spent extra time in contact with an oak barrel of some kind. So they don't start out in the oak barrel, they move them? Is that what 
what the finished means? Well, the initial barrel is made of oak, but then in the finish, obviously, they're, they're putting in another secondary barrel How long after do they that. keep it in the second barrel? It really depends. It varies. So we have had, uh, I think there was a, a rye that I just reviewed on the channel that was finished for two extra years. Okay. Yeah, in a wine cask. Hmm. And then sometimes it's like three months or four months. It really depends on how much of the flavor of that other barrel you want right on your product okay. sometimes i feel like this is probably i could be totally off here but i'm gonna assume that this is less time in a secondary barrel because i think those cherry and fruity notes i'm getting might have come from the second barrel but it's keeping a lot of, like i said those original bourbon flavors gotcha so maybe it didn't spend a whole lot of time in that second barrel coming out strong though i like that okay glass two color wise what do you think Compared to the other one? Yeah. Kind of similar, maybe a little lighter. A little lighter. A little less red. A little less red. That's absolutely right, I think. A little more golden, I think. Yeah. Let's get in here. Well, first, let's see, let me look at the viscosity here. How thick does it look like it is? Give it a little agitation and see. A little bit. Yeah. The first one wasn't super, didn't have a lot of viscosity either. I don't think so. Just a little bit. A little thin layer around mm -hmm. the rim there. This one, I get some brighter fruit notes, but one of the predominant things I'm getting here is a nuttiness. Hmm. Almost like trail mix. I think, because you know, trail mix has like your dried fruits in there, maybe like dried apricot and stuff like that. But then it's alongside nuts in the mix and I'm getting a lot of nuttiness and dried yellow fruits on it. I can see that, yeah. Not, it doesn't smell as sweet as the other one coming off of just your initial smell. Right. A lot of mixed nuts for yeah. sure. It's going a sort of different, more savory direction. Yeah. Cheers. You wanna try that? It's really soft. I think I like it. <laughs> I don't know if I don't like, like it or not. I don't like most of these things, I'll try. It's not really aggressive or punchy. What it makes me think of is a no-bake cookie. You know, the creamy peanut butter and, and light milk chocolate? Mm. Mm-hmm. That's really what I'm getting on that. Yeah, it's not, you're right, it doesn't have a strong punch to it. Mm -hmm. It's smooth, yeah. yeah. I would guess maybe somewhere around 100 proof. Yeah, I really do think of no-bake cookies. Hmm. You know, the, the dry oats mm -hmm. with the creamy yeah. peanut butter and chocolate. That's actually pretty good. I like it. It was very different than the last one. The, yeah. And especially different from the first round of all those fruity, jammy, and figgy notes. And it was all random, so I, I don't know the names, so I just kind of threw things together. There was, was one... That? in that lineup that really stood out. It was mm -hmm. super unique. Yeah. And it's it's one of the two that I moved on, if you already watched that video. And it gave me this like sea salt, like briny Gulf Coast sort of a note. Interesting. Yeah, it was just like right at the crescendo of the palette. Mm -hmm. It really reminded me of like those times that we're down in Florida, whether it's for a convention or whatever. And you know, we spend some time near the coast. There's the shops and mm -hmm. restaurants. You get that breeze of sea, Gulf, Gulf mm. sea air. Yeah, it was really interesting. And glass three, moving on. Again, not a lot of like redness no, to this one. similar in color to glass two. Mm -hmm, very similar. I mean, right up front on the nose, it's like a, like a cinnamon roll. Almost like vanilla frosting, cream cheese frosting, mm -hmm. and lots Ooh. of like cinnamon and baking spices. Yeah, it's sweet. Yeah, very, it's desserty. Mm -hmm. Baked goods. Even maybe even a little bit doughy too. That yeasty sort of a note. Well, I'll try it. Again, fairly timid. The tail end of the palate, those spices come back, but they're not heavy and strong. It does have this like vanilla cream note to it. I, I can't pick anything <laughs> because I don't know. You're better at this than I am, so well, it just I, tastes like I whiskey. taste more whiskeys, so yeah. it's probably a factor. Yeah. I mean, I smell a lot of whiskeys. I can tell differences now. Yeah. Uh, it has this great, I get this note every now and then, especially with finished whiskeys that have spent like extra contact with oak, but almost like a Kansas City barbecue. At the tail end of the of the palate and then into the finish. The southern heat. Yeah, something. and I'm kind of getting that on this one. Sort of campfirey pit smoke. Maybe. Yeah, I could see that now that I'm kind of like mm -hmm. sitting in there. Like mesquite wood chips or something like that. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? It's a sweet mesquite. Yeah. It does have a lot of that burnt wood quality mm -hmm. on the tail end of it. And I like that, personally. Yeah. Shall we move on? I think this one, this one might be the lightest of the bunch. Yeah, that's far more yellow than we've seen. Uh-huh, looks almost like a Pilsner. Mm-hmm. Pretty similar in viscosity to the last two. I think the first one was the thickest by far. Yeah. Oh, man. The very first thing that comes to mind on this is peach rings. You know those peach rings, oh, yeah. like gas stations and yeah. stuff? Or old-timey candy shops? Take a big breath through your mouth with your schnoz in there. It's not super pungent. Mm-mm. 
Like I, when I smell, even with my mouth closed, I'm not getting that burning sensation coming yeah. from some of some of the stuff I've smelled before. Man, I get so much peach on this. Mm. A little bit of like peaches and cream, a little bit creamy note. Let's try it. Come on, that's got to be like a peach brandy. Really? I, I think if I had to say for sure, like make a guess, I'd say that's a peach brandy finished bourbon right there. It does remind me of the peach whiskey that I like to drink. Mm, yeah, the Southern peach mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. Yeah. It's so peachy. And it's really, as someone who's really inexperienced with drinking something, this was really smooth to go down. Like mm -hmm. it didn't, a lot of times I don't drink it right when I'm trying stuff and it will burn going down, but this was really smooth, which is nice. Yeah, it yeah. could go, I bet you could make like a Southern old fashioned with mm. that, something like that. Yeah, I do get that peach flavor though. Mm. I'll have to look it up later and see what it is. Yeah. I'm curious. For sure. Yeah. And the last one here, glass five. Darker. Much than darker. Last two, for mm, sure. More mahogany ish. Mm -hmm. Slightly more viscous, but not by much. Almost, let me cleanse real quick because all I can taste right now is peach. This one gives me, like, um, shoot, what is it called? Good and Plenty. You ever Good and Plenty? Mm -hmm. The candy is like licorice yeah. flavor. It's the pink and white. Gives me Good and Plenty vibes on the nose. Very mm. licorice y, yeah. anise y, with a healthy, healthy dose of oak in there, too. I'm trying to remember. I think this is the one because like when I opened them to pour them, mm -hmm. I like to smell each one in the bottle. Yeah. And I think this was the one that I was like, ooh, oh, okay. That's, that smells good. Like yeah. I liked this. I like the smell of a lot of them, but yeah, it's, it smells sweet. Sure. Well, I'm going to try it. It's very sweet. Yeah. I'm definitely getting the caramels in there, but there's almost this, um, like, I don't know if you've had much vermouth. No. But, um, sometimes I use vermouth when I'm mixing up cocktails especially things like Manhattans. And it's this like dusty grape funk hmm. that you get. Interesting. I'll, I know funk is kind of a bad word, but like, you know, you walk into a warehouse where they're aging whiskeys and barrels and it's filled with this sort of dusty funk in the air. But it's not a bad thing. I was going to say that sounds a like thing. a bad thing. No, it, but this has more like wine cellar funk to it. How it just... You know what I smell what? when I first get it is maple syrup. Oh. I And I think that's what I smell. You know, you say maple and immediately what's sitting in the finish right here is that the, maple jumped out. That I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I normally can't pick out smells. Like, yeah, you know. When I smell something, I'm like, oh, that smells sweet or, you know, but when I opened it and I think now like my mind went to maple syrup. Mm -hmm. It smells like maple syrup. Yeah. And in, like maple, maple barrel finishes are not uncommon. So I, I would not be surprised. I do feel like there's like this aftertaste of of a little bit of maple, mm -hmm. but maybe that's because I'm smelling it yeah, and thinking you of it. Spoke yeah. it into existence, right? Yeah, it is very sweet. I do think of like your dusty, stemmy grapes, and then like she said, that maple note's definitely in there, mm -hmm. like maple candies, and the finish does ride on a nice, long, subtle wave of oak. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad aftertaste at all. No, not not by no. any means. Now comes the hard part where I gotta pick my two favorites. So I got to sort of revisit them and deliberate a mm -hmm. bit. Are there any that stand that stood out to you? I'm the wrong person to ask. I mean, smell wise, I will say number five, just, but I don't want to shift your perspective. I don't want you to pick what you, but in terms of just smell alone, that was the one out of all five that I was really like, oh, I really like the smell of this one. All right, this is tough because I don't think there's a bad whiskey on the table. I really enjoyed all of them, but I think the two that, stood out to me the most that i enjoyed the most because that's sort of my criteria this time around right. just quite simply which one did i like drinking the most and for me i think it's going to be glasses two and three okay i wasn't really sure where you're gonna go like i didn't really know right i mean yeah. i wasn't sure initially either i think i mean a number of them were pretty close contenders too mm -hmm. so it wasn't an easy decision right. but two definitely i really liked that no bake cookie note that i was getting the peanut butter and the milk chocolate and the oats and then glass three carried a lot of those traditional bourbon notes with just that subtle finishing, uh, you know, on it. And, and I really liked it. I thought it was very sippable, maybe even crushable. And maybe it's just because it's middle of the afternoon here. It's not the end of the day and I want something dark, right. deep, rich. But it was just really bright and fun and uh, quite sweet going down. So that's why I picked those ones. Well, I'm hoping now that we have four that we can beat you. Because yeah. I love it when you lose. I love it so much <laughs> when he loses. <laughs> So we got to make sure that we win. Thank you so much to everybody who sent yeah. in samples because this was really fun for me. It's fun for us. Um, I don't know if you enjoy it so much. because I do 
enjoy it. It makes it. you do right. more work than oh, normal. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> and thank you to BriarX for all your help with the spreadsheet and helping me get that all organized because it's been a huge help. So, mm -hmm. no, I like it and I like watching you lose. So I'm <laughs> well, you haven't seen that yet. It's going to happen. Probably. Oh, it's, it's only a matter of time. Happen. The next video, it will be the two winners from today and the two winners from yesterday going up against my bottle, my Joseph Magnus, which is right there. Boom. I can't wait. Vanna White. There you go. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. And with that, we say cheers, my friends. May you live richly and... Get better with age. Boom. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.